Hey, I'm May, and this is episode four of You Can Do That. So this one's gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna pop in and out here and there and tell you some things that I wanna make sure you don't miss. But we're talking to a paleontologist, so I feel like I should be somewhere a little more sciencey? Maybe somewhere with rocks or something? Let's try this, sometimes it works. Ready? Okay, this is still my house, that totally didn't work. Let me try one more time. <sighs> Better, okay, good. But I need something that says we're about to learn all about science. Nothing says science like a headlamp. Now let's hear from Dr. Brenda Hunda, paleontologist. My name is uh, Dr. Brenda Hunda, and I'm the Curator of Invertebrate Paleontology at the Cincinnati Museum Center. The best days that I have are going to be outside of the office, out in the field. That would mean getting up early in the morning and coming in to my office and grabbing all of my equipment and driving out to my field site. So this is, this is basically what I consider to be my laboratory. When I was a kid, um, I was that kid that took my mother's spoons and dug the mud out in the backyard until I had completely bent all of the spoons or broken all of her wooden spoons because I wanted to see like what was down there. I was that kid that knew all the dinosaur names and I never outgrew it, so I guess I'm still that kid. I also was just very adventurous, so I spent a lot of time outside. I had the luxury of being able to do that where I lived. One of the things you've also got to love to do is to, I guess, in my particular case, dig hit things, use um, hammers and sledges to, to cut out the rock. I think I just naturally had a science curiosity. And that really is the foundation of becoming a scientist. It's just having a curiosity and having questions and wanting to know if you could find the answers. So being adventurous, having a lot of questions, wanting to know the answers, certainly not being afraid to get muddy or dirty or get bitten by bugs. Now for me, in the work that I do, it's really important that I know exactly what rock layers things come from. Here there's this rock type called limestone and it has all kinds of shells and stuff on the inside. Now this layer here is actually nice. It's really easy to get at. The greatest thing about my job is that I don't come to work any day. I come to a place that I get to play and learn and contribute and that has value and so um, it's really the old saying is that you just got to go for your dreams whatever that happens to be um, don't let anybody stand in your way so I'm gonna find myself a little place to sit and I'm gonna wash them You know, every time I scrub one of these, I just never know what's going to be in there. It's like a Christmas present every single time. Every little fossil in there was a creature that lived almost half a billion years ago. It still gets me every day. I'm still not sure I completely understand what that means. Please tell me you caught that. Dr. Hunda has been doing this for years and years, and she still experiences wonder and amazement when she looks at those rocks. That's awesome. So my question to you is, what do you wonder about? What do you dream about? Do yourself and everyone else around you a favor and choose to do something with your life that will make you feel like that. Okay, back to her. So what do you see in that rock? This is basically the remains of animals that live at the bottom of the ocean, you know, 450 million years ago. All of the animals in here are known as invertebrates, so they don't have a backbone. I like to think of these kinds of animals as the stuff that would go crunch if you stepped on it. This dark brown piece here is of a trilobite called Isotelus. Lots more cryptolithus around here. Oh, another fringe right there. Bryozoans. Brachiopod right here. Graptolites, echinoderms, annelids, mollusks. Oh, we also have worm traces. 
How many phyla of life is that right here in this one piece? That blows my mind, you know? That's totally crazy, and I probably haven't even gotten them all. Okay, we've kind of run out of time because there was so much cool stuff happening out in the field there. Let me show you in 15 seconds what her lab looked like because it was way too cool to skip and there was a dinosaur there. Okay, there's one last thing we want to hear from Dr. Honda on. Girls can... Girls can rock. Girls can be girls and still do awesome things. Girls can be adventurous and travel the world and get dirty while they're doing it. <laughs> Love it.